Hello everybody, and welcome to my video explaining the difference between the factions in the Mana and Artifice mod. In this mod, when you, advance, when you complete tier number 2, you can advance to tier number 3, but in order to do this advancement, you have to perform one of four rituals, each corresponding to one faction that you will join. However, each faction has different spells and abilities and advantages. However, in order to decide those advantages, a good knowledge of them is quite useful, so I'm going to be here to provide you with that knowledge. So, the first faction we're going to be talking about is the Ancient Wizard faction. When you join them in the third tier, you gain access to two new artifacts and three new spells. And this spell here is for demonstration purposes, because some items in this faction will make it so your spells are cheaper. The first item we have is the Eldrin Sight Unurgent. It will make it so you can see Eldrin Wellsprings and get the glowing effect to nearby entities. The bracelet of Eldrin Power will reduce the mana cost of various spells, and you put it on your bracelet curio slot. If we look at the mana cost of this spell, it becomes reduced the closer we are to that Eldrin Wellspring, all the way down to 210, 110. And then when we get out to here, it's 210. So it can reduce the cost of your spells by about half. However, in order to do, have this benefit, you have to be nearby an Eldrin Wellspring or Residual Magic, which will occasionally appear when you cast a spell. The third thing we're going to be talking about is the Eldrin Flight component. When you click it, it will create a big arrow pointing towards a nearby Eldrin Wellspring, and it will fly you over to there, but it will occasionally lag quite a bit. And now I'm going to teleport all the way back over to there. This spell is quite useful because it will allow you to teleport between Elder and Wellsprings. Knowing where they are is an important part of Tier 4 of the mod. And being able to have benefits when you're nearby them and being able to travel between them quickly is very useful. The next spell we're going to be covering is the Recall spell. This spell will teleport you to the location of a Rune of Marking. This Rune of Marking is set to that location over there. And if I hold the Recall component in my hand, it will teleport me over there. This component will only work if you're within 500 blocks of the destination or if you are in the well and if you're in the same dimension. The third component we are we have is the arcane damage component. This will deal damage to targets and will drain some of their mana if they have any. In tier four you gain a new spell called Animus. This will animate blocks to be your allies. However, these allies will fade away over time. They also can leave behind quite a mess because they are animated blocks, and when they turn back, wherever the block is, they will turn back into their block form. In Tier 5, you have two new spells and two new artifacts. One of these spells is the Mana Transfer spell, which is also useful for multiplayer, where you can give your mana to other players. I'm unsure if it has any uses in single player. I created this golem to, who needs mana in order to work, but this spell doesn't appear to work on him. The next spell component we have is Mana Shield. When you cast the Mana Shield spell, it will give you the effect of Mana Shield, which will make it so instead of taking damage, some of your mana will be drained and the damage will be reduced. However, this will not prevent all damage being done to you, so you need to be wary that if you want to make it protect all damage, you have to increase the magnitude of the spell. It also occurred to me that while I was looking over the Mana Shield component, I forgot about another component. This is the Shield component, which will give you the Resistance buff. This is a Tier 3 spell. The two artifacts you gain in this tier are the Horn of the Conclave and the Arcane Crown. The Arcane Crown will increase your maximum mana, can be put on your Curio head slot, and it also reduces the mana cost of all of your spells, regardless of location. For example, if we check out this spell, it costs 178 mana instead of 210. The crown also will occasionally take away a negative debuff, such as poison. The last artifact we have is the Horn of the Conclave. If you right click on the ground, it will summon a few allied faction warriors who will come to your aid. These warriors will come to your aid for about one minute, but then they will disappear. 
the Horn of the Conclave has a huge cooldown, though, so be wary when you use it. In Tier 5, all factions get a set of faction armor. Your set of armor is the Spellweaver armor. It provides the same level of protection as Chainmail, and requires a set of Chainmail to make. The Spellweaver armor gives you an additional 1,000 mana, and it regenerates your mana 50% faster. You also have a limited form of flight that's best demonstrated in survival mode, and it will allow you to do a little bit of flying around. You also can occasionally reflect projectiles back at their, the person who targets you, but this has limited charges, and when you run out of charges, it will allow you to still be hit by an arrow. That is all the abilities that this faction has. Now we're moving on to the next faction. The second faction we're going to be covering is the Demon Faction. Their abilities focus on fire and making the nether more hospitable. For this faction, in Tier 3, you gain access to the Ember Glow Bracelet, which makes it so you can become immune to the effects of fire. However, as it does so, it will drain your mana, so you should be wary in case it drains completely. In Tier 4, you gain three new spells, Nethergate, Explosion, and Cauterize. Nethergate will teleport you to the nether, but because lava pools exist, I'm going to equip my Nether, Blow bra nether Glow Bracelet. And now I've been teleported to the nether. And I'm going to teleport back. This spell works as a two-way portal to the overworld and the nether, meaning that you do not need to build any more nether portals. However, this spell has its risks in it as it may teleport you to an unknown location in the nether. The next spell we have is the Couterize spell. When you use it, it will deal a little bit of damage to you, but it will give you the regeneration buff. However, if you have some form of fire resistance, such as the Ember Glow Bracelet, you won't take the damage, but you also won't gain the regeneration. We also have the Explosion spell, which, as its name suggests, causes an explosion, which breaks blocks and sets fire. In Tier 5, you gain access to three new spells and two new artifacts. The Life Tap spell will apply the Life Tap buff, debuff to opponents, and it will make it so when you deal damage to them, you get healed. Here's me demonstrating the effect again. So we have an enemy. I'm applying Life Tap to him, and I'm going to deal damage to him. And as you can see, I healed a little bit of health when he took damage. Absorption gives you two extra hearts, just like you've eaten a golden apple. The Fire Shield spell, despite having fire in its name, will not give you immunity to fire, but it will make it so that enemies who attack you will take some counterattack damage. It also will, in turn, make it so you will take less damage in your attacks. It also leaves behind this cool little trail. The two artifacts you gain access to are the Hellfire Staff and the Horn of the Chain. The Hellfire Staff, when combined with another fire damaging spell, such as with these two patterns, and you're going to be combining it with the Explosion spell from earlier, and combined with the Fire Damage Dealing spell, it will make it so the spell will deal have significantly larger effects than before, such as increased damage, increased radius of effect, and in most cases, it will create Hellfire instead of Normal Fire. However, for some reason, it's not creating Hellfire in this scenario. The last item this faction has is the Horn of the Chain, which will, like the Horn of the Conclave, summon a few allies from your faction to aid you in battle. The Demon Faction's set of armor is the Infernal Armor, which gives the same amount of protection as Diamond Armor. It also costs a set of diamond armor to make. This armor has three abilities, which makes it so when you run, you instead sprint really far. You can, in fact, become the fastest man alive. While you're running at hypersonic speeds, if you jump, you jump really high. And if you shift in the middle of that jump, you instead come crashing down to the ground and deal a small explosion down the ground. You additionally are completely immune to the effects of fire. As you can see, I'm not wearing my bracelet, meaning that it is the armor set that's providing you with fire resistance. It also gives you the strength 2 effect while you are on fire. So it's actually recommended that you set yourself on fire while you're wearing the set of armor. 
But if you're not interested in having cheaper spells or explosions of death, you can instead join the Fae Faction which provides you with several abilities involving invisibility, trickery, and general life benefits. When you join Tier 3, you learn three new spells, Briarthorn Barrier, Confuse, and Decoy. You also do have modifications to the spell Grow. The Grow spell for other faction costs Bone Meal to cast, but if you join the Fake Hordes, you don't need to have Bone Meal in order to cast the spell, and can instead grow plants at ease. Meaning that you can, in theory, grow a bunch of crops relatively quickly. The three faction-specific spells are Briarthorn Barrier, which will increase your armor by a little bit, have this little plant effect around you, and will make it so you are immune to the negative effects of cacti and sweet berries. It also makes it so that when somebody tries to attack you, such as our husk friend, he takes some counterattack damage. The second component we have is the decoy component, which makes it so that enemies around you may be distracted by this illusionary copy of yourself. This effect is increased the higher the magnitude of the spell. The next item we have is the confused spell, which will make it so enemies will target a random target instead of yourself. Meaning, that there's a chance that enemies will target each other instead of targeting you. This won't have any effects when you're alone, but when you have many enemies, it will make it so they can attack each other. The next item we have is the Bracelet of Trickery, which when you put it on will make it so when you shift, you become invisible. Sort of. It also makes it so when you punch people, you have a lot more knockback. However, in order to do this special knockback attack, you have to do it with your open fist instead of with a traditional weapon or any other item. It has to be done with your fist. In tier 4, you don't gain any new spells, but you do gain a thing called the Spectral Elytra, which will make it so that when you activate its abilities, which is that of an Elytra, you don't need to have firework rockets to remain in flight. However, in order to maintain this endless flight, it will drain some of your mana, meaning that you should be careful, because if you run out of mana mid-flight, you will die from the fall damage. In tier 5, you gain three new spell components, Mind Control, Heal, and Greater Invisibility. You also gain your Horn, which, when summoned, and used, will summon a few allies to attack your enemies. The Heal component will, re will heal your health, Kind of self-explanatory. The greater invisibility component will hide you from enemies, including if you are wearing armor, unlike the normal invisibility effect, which does not hide you from opponents, including when you're wearing armor. The mind control effect makes it so that when you have multiple enemies, one of them will guarantee attack an ally instead of just a chance of them attacking an ally. However, when this effect wears off, you will lose control of the creature. The Fae Faction's armor set is the Druidic armor, which provides the same protection as Iron Armor. This armor set, like Spellweaver armor, gives you a little bit of flight, so you can escape from danger. When you wear the entire set of armor, it also can act like an elytra. If you tap normally, it will allow you to fly. It will actually function exactly like the Spectral Elytra. When you're wearing this armor, there's also a chance that melee attackers will be teleported away when they hit you. If creatures do manage to bring you down to low enough health, you will automatically recover a few hit points. However, this has a long cooldown, as indicated by your chest plate. The fourth faction we're going to be covering today is the Undead Faction. When you join this faction, which I'm going to use this command to set my faction to the Undead, you become Undead, which means that you burn in the sunlight. However, you also gain water breathing the moment you touch any body of water. The weakness to the sun can be counteracted by wearing a helmet, but the helmet will slowly lose durability, meaning that you should have some sort of countermeasure to it. However, there also is one other downside. When you join the undead faction, you no longer regenerate mana, such as with this spell comp with any of these spell components. I can cast it, and as you can see, I will not automatically regenerate mana. But how do I regenerate mana, you might ask? 
Well, in order to regenerate mana, you have to kill creatures. And when you kill the creature, you will regenerate a bunch of mana. The amount of mana you kill varies by the creature, but undead creatures such as zombies and skeletons will not regenerate as much mana as creatures like villagers. I personally would not recommend playing as the undead faction unless you have some sort of mob farm that will allow you to regenerate your mana more passively. However, there is also one other side effect. If you pay attention to my mana bar, you will notice that it now has 11,000 mana as compared to the previous 2,000 when you are not a member of the undead faction. This means that you don't have to spend as long waiting to regenerate your mana. Beyond this, when you join the faction, you gain two new spells and one item that is technically an artifact in the game. This artifact is the coffin and it functions exactly like a bed. You can set your spawn point at it, and if you sleep at it, you will regenerate souls if you have been active for a long enough period of time. Otherwise, you will not regenerate souls, and you will receive a message in the chat saying you didn't. Your two spells are Summon Skeletal Horse, which summons a horse for the next two minutes, which runs pretty quickly, and it also jumps super quickly. You also gain the Mind Vision spell, which makes it so you can see from the point of view of another creature for a limited time. In this case, I am seeing the world from the point of view of the horse. You can end this effect by double tapping the space bar. When you join tier 4, you gain two new spell components and another artifact. This artifact, the Ring of Brittle Bone, makes it so that when you kill creatures, you regenerate even more souls. The spell component of Mist Form makes it so you can fly around it also turns you into a little mist. However, because you are made out of mist, you cannot interact with the outside world. As you can see, I cannot deal damage. Oh, actually, apparently I can deal damage to a spectral entity such as that. But if I were to find a husk of some sort, I can deal damage to him. But when I switch to my mist form... Huh, for some reason I can. That's not an intended feature. I also just noticed that I'm regenerating mana by doing damage. That's also not supposed to happen. The other effect, Fossilize, will make it so that when you take a bunch of damage, it's reduced to 4 damage. But any amount of damage is then dealing 4 damage from that point on. In other words, Fossilize can make it so large amounts of damage that you take are reduced to 4 damage, or 2 hearts of damage. However, if you are only taking little amounts of damage, such as the poison effect, it will make it so that it becomes lethal instead of simply a great inconvenience. This component is one that can be applied to both allies and enemies, and it has quite a few interesting applications. When you join tier 5, you gain two new spells, Possession and Horn of the Grave. Horn of the Grave, like other artifacts, summons allies. And the possession effects allows you to take control of a mob. And when you left click, you use a special ability. Such as this skeleton, it shoots a little shuriken. You can even view yourself from the outside thing, and potentially even kill yourself if you, if you really try. Yeah, for some reason right now the game is thinking that I have the effects of the armor set already, which is very interesting. Thinking of the armor set, I probably should cover what it does. The set of armor you have is the Witherbone armor. And it gives the same amount of protection as netherite armor. It has two abilities. One of them, that whenever you deal damage to another creature, so this is our unwilling volunteer, the husk, you regenerate some souls. And it also makes it so that when you get down to zero health, but instead of dying, you instead will be converted into a mist form. This effect can be done as many times as you have gone above half a heart, which theoretically means that you cannot die. Shown here are the four sanctums that you can create in tier 4. This is the sanctum for the wizard faction. This is the sanctum for the de demon faction. This is the sanctum for the fey faction and the undead faction. So that has been my video doing a oh, quick little overview over all the various faction abilities in this mod.
Thank you for watching, and if you learned something, please tell me in the comments. This is my first time trying to do some form of, like, script. I went way off the script, <laughs> by the way. I'm just... N it's kind of hard to read something over my shoulder while trying to make the video somewhat coherent on this side. So, if you guys appreciate it, feel free to like and subscribe. I ha already have a quick playlist about me playing around in Made Out of Artifice, and pretty soon I hopefully will be playing around in a server known as Mistcraft, which is based off of the Mistborn book series and the magic systems in there. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a very good day.